goes. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is so good to be in worship with you. I'm Reverend Tyler Jackson. I'm the senior pastor here at McEver Road United Methodist Church, and it's good to welcome you uh, in this somewhat warm uh, space, right? It's, uh, it's amazing what these two heaters can do uh, in this space, but I'm glad that you have made it out. Uh, we pray that you are comfortable as you gather to worship with us. Hopefully you got some refreshments on your way in, plenty for all to enjoy. Uh, and again, a special welcome to those worshiping with us online. If you have children with us, we welcome them in worship. We do have uh, some activities for them to do while they're in worship with us. If they need that, we want them to be fully engaged. Um, that makes sense for them and, and for your family. Uh, but know that we also have children's worship uh, dedicated just for them as well. If, if parents, you'd like some, uh, some time to yourself, right, to be able to focus. Um, but it is a beautiful thing to be able to worship all together as the family of God. As uh, I continue in, in my welcome and introduction, I did just want to point out just a couple of things, uh, make some a couple of, of announcements in your bulletin. Uh, we do have the food pantry coming up this week. And so if you've never done that, it's really a wonderful experience. It's actually a great experience for children. They can find ways to get them involved to help make uh, the, the food packages and things and and we can get them to the folks in need. And there's a special request here. Uh, I was going to share this during our concerns, but um, the the Buckins, Ben Buckins specifically, um, has experienced a loss this morning. His sister Melinda passed away. And so they're going to be, uh, as you can imagine, uh, dealing with that and sorting through that and working through that. So we certainly want to be praying for them, but they are big leaders and volunteering for um, that ministry. And in addition, Jim and Jean, who are also big volunteers for that ministry, they are out of town. And so we really would love um, if you have any questions about that, or if you'd like to participate, um, uh, we'll have a leader there to help kind of lead us through things. But if you would be willing, either on Monday or Saturday of this week, Monday, tomorrow from 4 to 6 p.m., and then Saturday, November 19th, 10 a.m. to noon. And so this is a great way to jump in and be the hands and feet. Uh, the other way that has been exciting to see is y'all have already responded and brought in some coats for children uh, that we're doing. We're doing a coat drive for children for the Hispanic Alliance, uh, who really tries to emphasize care of family and children. So thank you to those. We'll get actual boxes put up, uh, but y'all have responded already so well. I'm already seeing a pile begin to form uh, close to Angela's desk, so in the front office there. So uh, please continue to bring those coats. As you, uh, as we all know now, the, the weather dropped pretty quickly. We enjoyed some 70s, 60s, 70s weather, and then it dropped quickly to 30s. Uh, and so we want to keep that in mind. The last announcement, uh, Advent is right around the corner. It's only two weeks away, y'all. Can you believe it? And so uh, it's also a short season, but a very important season. It's a great way to draw closer to God in preparation and anticipation and would invite you to consider uh, joining uh, the Journey to Bethlehem Sunday School class for this short study for Advent with Lamar and Judy and, and everyone. And so there is information there for you to sign up and to be a part of that um, and, and uh, get a lot out of that. So uh, I think that's all I have by way of announcements and, and introductions. And as a lovely surprise and treat this morning, we are blessed to already receive this at our Holy Ground service earlier this morning. But we have Lily here who is going to open us up with the song that she not only uh, wrote the lyrics for, but she also wrote the music for. So this is an original song by Lily. Uh, and so Lily, thank you so much for sharing your gift of worship with us. And we look forward to receiving from you as we all center our hearts and minds to glorify God. Thank you. Okay. Um. 
Bye. In fact, the first time I did this, my dad actually cried. <laughs> she made me cry at nine o'clock. So And it's not it's hard to make Chris Hester cry, right? Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lily, for sharing that word with us. I love that message of God always being with us. I definitely we think we can all say amen to that. And so in that same spirit of God being with us as we gather for worship this morning, let us call ourselves to worship. From beginning to end, God is with us. Thanks and praise. For the times and seasons of joy, God is with us. Our thanks and praise. For the times and seasons of grief and challenges, God is with us. No matter what, God is with us and for us every day. So we give thanks and worship God, whose faithful presence redeems our past and guides us into our future. Amen. Will you stand and sing with us? We are thankful and give him praise. He has made me glad.
Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Good morning, everyone. Great to see everybody. And, you know, yesterday, this being Georgie, yesterday was spring. Welcome to winter. We change it. And I, I hear it's going to be spring again probably tomorrow. Yesterday, um, the church hosted the um, lay leadership classes here. We had two classes, one on soul reset as well as one on prayer. And I was asked, since I was going to be here, um, to say thank you, one, to the church for hosting this event and to the foods and drinks that were provided for the participants. We had about 10 people here. It was a really good time, but they did ask me to extend a thank you to the church for your hospitality and for really showing us what this church is all about. It was really a good, good event. And we will be here again next Saturday. And we have one person who is gluten-free, so if somebody can bring her a sandwich, that would be great. We are, we've come to our time for celebrations and concerns, and so we're opening the floor up. If we have any birthdays, anniversaries, or other celebrations you would like to share. I'm going to run since we don't have a runner today. We're just happy to have uh, three of our grandchildren here in the other room, and our oldest son, Will, is here from Snellville. Other celebrations? Yeah, I got one. Okay. Uh, for my son's return home, uh, celebrations. Uh, he was in the hospital for 50 days or whatever it was and so he's um, in recovery stage and it may take a long time. This was Crohn's surgery that was very serious and um, complications and such but uh, the prayers that you've given make such a difference and we were there at, at their home just yesterday and he was saying how he could feel prayers. Um, he was raised in this church when it was down the road, and uh, please continue to pray for Kevin Bratton. Thank you. Got one from Guatemala. The bags that you packed were just hugely, hugely appreciated. And I'm sorry I didn't get the slides to Kira, but I'm going to uh, hopefully have a couple pictures of the kids. They'd never had anything like that before. And so to see them all excited about the bags that that all of you packed for him was just really great. Thank you. Thank you. Our daughter Amy is coming home Friday for 10 days. So she'll be in church for two weeks. Uh, that's something very special. Do we have others? Okay, we'll now move into our time for uh, prayer requests and concerns. Uh, yes, let's remember in prayer the family of Bob Wilder, please. He passed this week, so he's 90 years old, young. Like Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. I'd like to add on to that. Um, if you didn't know or didn't receive the notification, Bob's funeral will be tomorrow at 1 p.m. at the, in the chapel of Memorial Park Funeral Home. And so visitation is available anytime between 11.30 and 1 prior to the service. Um, we also uh, got word over the weekend, some of you may remember Renee Bender. Her daughter, Corey, um, is... Uh, having some complications with her pregnancy and so just to be lifting them up and certainly their daughter Corey uh, in your prayers and then we got word this morning that Bob or excuse me not Bob Ben Buckins uh, sister Melinda passed away and so please be uh, praying for them and, and their family as well 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Any other concerns? One more. Um, yes, I have an unspoken prayer request, meaning that I'm not at liberty to say what it is, but God knows the need, and I covet your prayers. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And all too often we pray for others and fail to pray for ourselves. So I am, have found out in the last week that I am dealing with high blood pressure. So I've got doctors working with me, trying to go through the long process of picking out the right combination to get that straightened out and make me feel a little bit better. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hi, thank you. Um, I have an interview over Zoom on Tuesday to get into grad school for a Master's of Science in Management. So please cover me in prayer because I'm really nervous about it. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Okay, any others? Oh, yes, Miss Jan. Neighbor Kathy um, lost her husband, and now she has a son that has cancer, and it doesn't look like he's doing very well. So, um, you know, she's having a hard time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Any others? <clears throat> Let us go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Dear Heavenly and Merciful Father, you've heard many things that have been shared with you today, giving thanks for prayers that have been answered, and also hearing us as we come to you with our own private concerns and our things that scare us in the night. And Father, it's so great and wonderful to know that we can just lay these at your feet and you'll pick them up and you'll take care of them for us. Father, just help us remember as we're coming into holiday seasons, we're soon to be celebrating Thanksgiving and your birth, and things are going to start getting hectic for us. You'll just remind us when we're preparing for Thanksgiving that it is you who deserves all the thanks for all the prayers and all the wonderful things you have done for us and the celebrations we're getting ready to have is to celebrate you coming back into our lives. Father, let this be that time. Let that be our reminder that we keep giving the thanks and praise that you so greatly deserve and that we need to remember to prepare our hearts and our minds for you to come back and invite you back into our lives. You have shown us your mercy and your love so many times and sometimes we just need to slow down and remember that it's your gifts that we celebrate. And Father, one of the greatest things that your son taught us was how to praise you and give you worship by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture lesson today comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Amen. It is a, a, a short passage, but as, as we all know, it only takes one passage for us to, to sit and to hear from God in deep and rich ways. And so that is uh, the, the spirit in which I pray that, that God uh, speaks to you this morning. So would you go to, with me uh, in a time of prayer? God, we are so grateful for all that we've been given. God, we thank you for your word that is life to us. Help us not to take it for granted. God, may the things that you have impressed on my heart as a shepherd of your people, God, I pray that it would plant seeds that need to be planted. God, that it would grow what needs to be grown and it would produce the fruit that glorifies you. So God, be in this time that we continue to share together. We give you thanks, Lord, and we pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. And, and some uh, initial reflections and connections. You know, it, it, I love when, when we can make what I call hinges, right? When we move from particularly one season into another or even uh, one series into another when it's related to worship. I appreciated the, the joke about spring and then now it's actually winter we might go back to spring hopefully it's not like that uh, when we're we're leading worship but it may be that way but one of the beautiful things is that in this last series we we emphasize these fruitful practices of a disciple and, and we walk through each of those five practices for five weeks and then on the sixth week which was last week what we decided to do was to remember not only what, what God has done through Jesus Christ, but how people have responded to what Jesus has done in their lives and made an intentional decision to give beyond themselves. Because what we named last week is that we wouldn't be here unless somebody was willing to give beyond themselves. And, and hopefully what they gave was a piece of what they had received from Jesus. Right, the love of Jesus. And so we remembered that, we celebrated that, even as we came to the table, came to what is known as the Eucharist, which is a great Thanksgiving, right? It's a way of remembering what God has done for us, and yet it's also an invitation to respond, 
to respond to God's grace and work and activity in our lives. And sometimes that work and activity, it, it, it's there before we even realize it. And then sometimes we, we start to become aware, right? We, we begin to see these, these small glimpses in our lives or in the, in the lives of the people that we love where, where we see God's presence active and at work. It begins to shift and change our reality, our experience of this life that we've been given. And, and then we, we hopefully want to see more of, of those glimpses, right? And hopefully they don't just become glimpses, but they become more and more apparent. They, became, they become more and more of not just how we see the world, but how we live in it. And so I thought it was a great hinge that, that last week we, we looked to the disciples, we looked to Jesus, who is our, uh, the perfecter of our faith, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, and, and how God continues to invite us forward. And when I was thinking about this, this passage this morning, about gratitude, about thankfulness, you know, as we continue to, to follow the way of, of Jesus, as we continue to intentionally develop these, these fruitful practices of our discipleship, we should be growing in our daily experience of God's power and of God's presence in our lives and in the lives of those around us. And what happens is that our relationship with God isn't something casual, right? It isn't something random. It becomes something, it may start out that way, right? Just like any kind of relationship. But hopefully over time, we begin to place more and more intentionality in building up that relationship. And as that relationship develops, as our awareness of God develops in our lives and in the lives of those around us, we constantly have the opportunity to marvel, to, to worship and praise God for all that God continues to show us and all that God continues to share with us. Our experience of life with God develops into a lifestyle of gratitude where we not only know, but we appreciate God's blessing all around us that results in praise and thanksgiving. And, and so in this, what I call a mini series, right? It's a two-part series on gratitude, on thanksgiving. We want to cultivate this posture of what I'm calling thanks living, right? Thanks living. Where it's not just moments or once a year that we give thanks, but but by, with God's help and by God's grace that we will be able to fulfill the words in 1 Thessalonians that says, be thankful in all circumstances because this is God's will for you, for us who belong to Jesus Christ. And, and really quickly, this, this may be a, a tall order, right? There's, there's sort of some impossible uh, what I would consider initially some impossible requests. If you, if you read just before this verse in 1 Thessalonians, it says, uh, it says this, particularly in verse 13. Think of them highly with love because of their work, talking about your, your leaders and, and those who are working with you and instructing with you, right? Comfort the discouraged Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Be patient with everyone. Here's the hard part. Make sure no one repays a wrong with a wrong. But always pursue the good for each other and everyone else. Rejoice always. Pray continually. And this is where verse 18 comes in. Give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It continues. Don't 
suppress the spirit. Don't brush off spirit-inspired messages, but examine everything carefully and hang on to what is good. And so as I think about all of these things, like the, the impossibleness, I think, at sometimes when I wrestle with my own prejudices, when I wrestle with my own sense of understanding, and, and when something comes in conflict with that understanding, how I want to put an us versus me mentality, right? And, and particularly if we're being real, we're being honest, when, when people hurt us, genuinely hurt us, not just frustrate us or, or make us aggravated or annoy us, but the people in our lives and maybe even currently that have hurt you or, or are hurting you. This is an impossible request, right? To, to, to pray for and seek for the good of those that are hurting you or harming you or for those that, that we may consider our, our enemies. And, and, and so it gives me great pause. How, how is this even possible? Like, let, let's be honest, right? Let's be real and practical. How do we even do this? It's one thing to, to read it and, and feel good about it. It's another thing to put it in practice in our lives. And, and I think there, there's perhaps some nuance here that, that may be helpful for us. Is that it says, be thankful in all circumstances. And I think it's helpful that it doesn't say, be thankful for all circumstances. Do y'all hear the difference there? It's, it, it's not inviting us to, to thank God for the, the pain and suffering that we might have experienced or that we are experienced, experiencing. Instead, I, I think it invites us to push much deeper. I, I would argue, I would suggest that if we simply give God thanks for all things, I, I think we're glossing over God's character, right? Because if we're giving God, God thanks for all things, then, then it suggests that God is the one orchestrating and doing the things that, that hurt and harm others, right? And, and you have to wrestle with that. Right? It becomes problematic, right? Because the, the testimony of, of Scripture begins to reveal to us God's character. And, and I think you would agree with me that it is caring and compassionate, right? And this gets into a much bigger question that we, we won't get into quite in the depth that I'd, I'd love to, but we wrestle with this idea is, is how can a caring and loving God allow brokenness and suffering to continue in the world. And a very quick reflection on that is, is if we're not giving God thankfulness for everything that's going on in the world, and we shift the framework, the lens, into giving God thanks in everything, then what happens is that we move from a position of where God is, is making everything happen and, and instead wrestling with the reality of our actions. Do y'all hear me? We have to wrestle with the choices that we make that hurt and harm other people, Right? And so the, the, the shift in position is to seek God in those moments, right? We don't give God thanks for, for, for the harm that's happening in our lives, but, but what we are giving thanks for, and I want you all to hear this, is that God is present with us in them. And sometimes that's really hard to see. 
right? And so I want to make that distinction and make that crystal clear as an invitation for us, that this isn't something trite or, or something, you know, that, that sounds really nice, right? And that we should just ignore all the, the pain and brokenness and suffering around us that we're experiencing and kind of sweep it under the rug and say, well, I shouldn't feel that way because the scripture says I should thank God in all circumstances. I think there's some nuance here that invites us to go deeper and instead be honest with where we are with God. Say, God, I am, I am struggling. God, I am hurting. God, I feel like you have abandoned me. God, I don't know where I'm, I, I'm supposed to take my next step. God, I am confused. God, I am worried. I am troubled. God, I am disappointed. I am frustrated. God, I'm angry. And what sounds like negativity, what I just said, what sounds like negativity to me sounds like a prayer, right? When we're able to speak these things, what we're feeling inside, what's going on in our hearts and minds and lives is an invitation, maybe even is a cry for help for God to step in and do something and that we're so perhaps desperate that what we're really doing is searching and seeking after God. Do y'all hear that? I was going to ask if y'all agree with it, but maybe you don't. But when I really think about this, this passage, and, and as a pastor walking with people through really challenging seasons of their lives, and people ask me over and over, why is this happening? I don't try to give them a nice package to answer. I say, I don't know. The only thing I do know is that God will be with you in it. And so the invitation this morning to take seriously gratitude in all, in all circumstances is for us to be honest with God and I know we're kind of leaning more on the heavier, harder side of things. But it does say all things. So we give God thanks, right? In the good and in the joys. I love that it's a part of our worship expression this morning and every Sunday, typically. But sometimes I think it's easy to give God praise when things are going well. And yet sometimes it's easy to take it for granted. Right? And that was the other word that, that came to mind is, is if you really want to see more of God in your life, have a posture of gratitude. Because it means that what you're seeing around you, you're acknowledging intentionally. Hopefully God's presence around you, even if you're not seeing it yet, maybe what you can give thanks for is how God has been with you in the past. Maybe it's, it's how God's been with you through your church family, right? That has been through those, those difficult seasons with you. Again, it says rejoice always and pray continually. And I really began to think about this and hopefully I'll end on this because I actually want you all to share what you're thankful for, what you're grateful for. But when I was a new father, I really wanted to figure out what is the best way to practically introduce my children 
to God's power and presence? How can I cultivate in them a sense of prayer? Right? Praying is our connection, is an intentional connection with God, a conversation as we develop that connection. And I didn't really know where to start other than just to say, what can we give thanks for? And as you can imagine, right, one of the, I remember vividly, I'd be, I would be taking Gabriel to, to preschool in the morning and I'd say, hey, buddy, let's pray. What do you want to pray for? What can we give thanks for today? Right? And I started pretty young, right? So you got some pretty interesting answers, right? And it really almost became like a um, I spy kind of scenario, right? It's just whatever, whatever they saw out the window, right? God, thank you for the stop sign, right? God, thank you for the trees. God, thank you for the bug, right? God, thank you for the music. God, thank you for my friends my family. Thank you for the airplane. Thank you for the clouds. And it seems so simple and maybe even foolish or silly, but I find a profound beauty and even sacredness in that kind of posture. The, the seeking and the searching for God and absolutely everything. Because if we believe God is in all and through all, how are we seeking and searching after that? And so I would want to invite you that if you, if you have a prayer life, spend this week leaning that much deeper into thanksgiving and gratitude. And if you don't have much prayer life at all, it's a great place to start. And that's honestly how I continue to develop my prayer life. Because what you realize is that you have been given so much more than you really know. You begin to build that awareness of God's grace, the work that God does for us on our behalf that we can't do for ourselves. And it may come from God directly, but don't be blind to how it comes through friends and family and your church family and maybe even strangers. And so that's my invitation for you is that we would have childlike faith. We would want to seek God in everything, even if it's silly, even if you're thanking God for the stop sign, right? I want to keep going, but we're running out of time. <laughs> this is a problem when, when you work from an outline, right? I'll do it, but it won't be long. Because there's a way that, that a door opens when we do something like that. Honestly, when I was thinking of like thanking God for the stop sign, thank God that somebody is thinking about our safety, right? So that we can get around to whatever we need to get around to doing, right? Like that's kind of remarkable, right? It, it, it didn't just grow out of the ground. Somebody had to put it there, right? It's not taking it for granted, and I had this thought that, that you always hear about the things like, well, we shouldn't take this or that for granted. Well, why don't we, right? Like why, why or rather, why do we? Why do we take things for granted? And I, I, I just think that thanksgiving and gratitude, developing a heart of thanksgiving and gratitude helps us reclaim the things that we take for granted. I don't want us to take for granted our families, 
And I certainly don't want us to take for granted each other as an expression of Christ's church in this place and time. Don't take this for granted. Again, we, we only cease to exist because you show up and you respond. And there is more depth and richness when you show up expectant, not just for you to get something from God, but for God to use you to share something with someone else. And so with that being said, we have these these reflection questions. And we're only going to pass the microphone around um, and then go into a time of, of prayer. What circumstances am I thankful for? I'm very thankful uh, for the way my parents brought me up, teaching me right from wrong, and um, just being there for everything that we needed as children and grown-ups. They have passed on now, but they have taught me so many lessons that I'm trying to pass on to my children. Amen. So teaching and wisdom that's been passed on from generation to generation. Other things we're grateful for. Just coming back from Guatemala, I'm really grateful for clean water that comes right out of the tap. That's one of the things that we can get really used to here that's not common around the world. Amen. Definitely not taking it for granted, amen. We have to be reminded, we have to be reminded. There's another sermon in there. Other gratitude or thanksgiving. I'm grateful for the fact that we can enjoy this freedom of being able to come and gather and worship and pray and learn about God because some people in the world, they can't do that. Mm Mm-hmm. They do not have that freedom, so that's something that we should reclaim and be grateful for so that we will not take that for granted. Others. I'm so thankful that God loves us just because we're here, just because, you know, no matter what we do, I mean, he's just always wants the best for us. And uh, just the, the help from so many people in my life to help me grow in that way, that I love God. Amen. Others? Thank you all for sharing and beginning to share. You know, my, my hope as a, as a pastor and a preacher sometimes is that the, the thinking and the reflecting and the sharing doesn't stop or have to stop once we're supposed to hit a, a 12 o'clock, <laughs> right? We take these things with us into the week. We can take these things with us each and every day. And so some more reflection questions for us to consider is this. How can I grow in gratitude for difficult circumstances I have faced or I am facing? Number three, what assurance does belonging to Jesus give me? What does this teach me about God? What does this teach me about myself? And what does this teach me 
about others. Would you go with me in prayer? God, it is a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give our thanks and praise because it is an invitation, God, to see you at work in every aspect of our lives, in our relationships, in the work that you've called us to do in the places we find ourselves. It's in the acknowledgement and the thanksgiving where we respond, where we we say, wow. The living God is present here in this time, in this moment, in this conversation. And we can't help but give you praise. The glory that you deserve. God, we do thank you for your love that is persistent, God. That endures. That is patient. That sometimes perplexes us and confuses us because God frankly we would give up on ourselves and we would give up on other people and yet your love remains steadfast help us God when we have not loved ourselves, when we have chosen not to love others as you have loved us. God, help us not to take for granted the amazing work of your grace, the freedom that comes from being in relationship with your son, Jesus Christ, in the active power and presence of the Holy Spirit. God, thank you for leading us and guiding us for the many, many blessings we're aware of. But God, help us and reveal to us or just to accept, God, that there is more work going on that is for us rather than against us that we can give thanks for. God, the hope of your gospel is this and will always be this, is that you are for us and never against us, that nothing can separate us from your love. God, that you are with us You're with us through your son, Jesus Christ. And through the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, you continue to be with us. Nudging us, reminding us, encouraging us, building us up, God. As we seek after you. As we live through life's ups and downs, its celebrations and its challenges, God. That you are never far from us. But that you are with us. God, we thank you for all that we have received in this time of worship and for what we will continue to receive from you Help us, God, to acknowledge, to give thanks, and to praise you always. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Everybody said, amen. Amen. Join us as we sing, give thanks.
sounded good. Let us receive this benediction and send ourselves forth. May daily gratitude and thanksgiving help us to see that God is not far from us. As we see that God is not far from us, help us be God's presence for others as we continue to love Christ, love people, and help people love Christ. Amen. Y'all are loved. Have a blessed week. Stick around and enjoy fellowship. Some snacks before you leave. Anything to refresh yourselves. Thank you all so, so much. I am grateful for each and every one of you. God bless.